uh, okuchobola edembe lyo buntu okutulugunya okutta okubuzaawo misango ja nagomola mu koti ensiyo na ICC omusango chagulanyi center mu Robert Bobby Wine go yateka yo ngawa bila jeno yo ilikaguta mu 7 mutabani we anita mongi nabane ne mu government ya jeno mu 7 ati no gwaja bagide da ebintu bya batabuseko da emisango kakati no jiri nye kandago unconditional release of all political prisoners held in the dungeons of dictator Rome 7 we demand the unconditional release of all political prisoners M7 you are to release all these young men they are in Uganda to enjoy the country not to be persecuted by a man who claims to be their leader Mr. M7 we are demanding the unconditional release of all political prisoners held in, in your dungeons. We are demanding the freedom of Bobby Young, Agaba Anthony, to be restored. Miss Evan, we are demanding release that young man. We are demanding that you release all people whom you persecute because of their political affiliation. Mr. Museven supporting a political ideology or a political organization, it was never a crime. It will never be a crime. Even in the new Uganda, we are all fighting to attain. Mr. Museven, our fighting against you, it is intended to restore human dignity in Uganda, to restore the rule of law in Uganda, to put to an end the persecution of those who differ with you in terms of political ideology. Mr. Museven, we are demanding the whereabouts of the missing 18 Ugandans. Mr. Museven, we are still demanding the whereabouts of the 18 missing Ugandans. Kibalama John Bosco, Sesaz Isma, Luwemba Mustaf, Mubiru Hassan, Lukwago Martin, Zimla Dennis, Semudu Michael, Kiria Peter, Nalumoso Vincent, Wangolo Shafik, Musisi Mboa, Sempi Jayuda, Damulira John, Kanata Muhammad, Mbaba Moses, and Baguma Joseph. The 18 missing persons are still nowhere to be found, yet Museveni's uh, Prime Minister came and said that they know exactly where these people are being held. We are demanding for their... <coughs> For their presentation in the courts of law, given the fact that the judicial system issued a document known as habeas corpus, which enforces the government to present the accused persons in the courts of law, and the general public can hear their plea, whether they plead guilty or not guilty. Mr. Museven, we are still informing our brothers and sisters on the African continent that you continue to coerce other political prisoners who are still languishing in jail. You want them to plead guilty as you did to the first 19 people, you, those whom you claim that you pardoned them. And there was, there was no crime whatsoever that took me, it took them into that dungeon of yours. Mr. Museven, there is no such a thing as a presidential pardon because these people were incarcerated illegally and you are to be held accountable. And the government, it is to compensate them when the new government comes into power. Museven, we are not saying that you're a legitimate government should compensate these persecuted people. What we are demanding it is our victory. Our victory, Mr. Museven. Because we took to the polls on January the 14th, 2021, and we elected a president of our choice. And his entire lady administration, that is the National Unity Platform. Mr. Museven, we are not requesting any service from you. Mr. Museven, what we are demanding, it is our victory. That is irreversible. That is unchangeable. That is the code on which we stand and confront your dictatorialism because we ostracized you out of our political political institutions as it is well accepted by global 
norms that a leader should be ushered in into the leadership by means of the ballot box of which we did in the broad daylight. Mr. Museven, you refused to concede defeat and you clinged on to power. So if we start to estimate the blood which has been shed during the campaign trail and after the presidential election or the entire general election, we can count hundreds, if not a hundred and thousand Ugandans, hundreds of thousands of Ugandans who have met the brutality of yours. Mr. Museven, you are still killing Ugandans. The people of Africa, this month of November, on the 18th and 19th, Museven massacred a lot of Ugandans because they were tired of his regime. Museven massacred a lot of Ugandans on the 18th and 19th of this November year 2020. We are still grieving. We are still grieving with the families of those people. The beloved families of the massacre of the 18th and 19th of November, it will never be forgotten. Mr. Museven, you have commissioned a lot of diversionary activities on mainstream media and on social media solely to cover the grieving of those people. The families are still grieving. The families are still demanding for justice. We will only attain justice when we do our way with Mr. Museveni's rotten regime. Brothers and sisters, Bob the Mechanic, as always, as you may have seen that our just leader, Uganda's vision bearer, His Excellency Robert Chagulany Sintamu, a.k.a. Bobby Wine, he is in the southern side of America, down there, sending the message, propagating the message, Continue advocating for just leadership to, to prevail on the continent of Africa and on the global scale. Brothers and sisters, we should applaud our leader because of his tirelessness in advocating for the restoration of the rule of law in Uganda. He is in South, uh, South America there, meeting with other democratic leaders who are fighting a tooth and nail to eradicate a mindset of dictatorialism within elderly people who occupy higher positions of leadership. Dear brothers and sisters, we, we should remember all of us that vices such as dictatorial, dictatorialism, they are contagious in nature. So if we confront them from all sides, from all corners, they won't get any space to strategize how to brutalize innocent people. So let's combine our forces as our leader empowered us, as he did at the very inception of the struggle which he is leading, that inclusivity plays a very, very big role in this, our struggle. So brothers and sisters, we applaud our leader and the, his entire entourage or his entire delegation of which he traveled with, uh, the Secretary General of National Unity Platform, which he was, uh, David Lewis Rubongoya and other peoples who are traveling with the president in his campaign still. So brothers and sisters, Bob the Mechanic straight away, a lot of things are unfolding in Uganda, brothers and sisters, a lot of things are unfolding in Uganda as we continue to demand the restoration of human rights in Uganda. We are fighting for human rights to be reinstalled because Museven deprived us from all the rights of personal integrity, from all, all rights, from all civil liberties. Museven took them away from us. All social and economic rights were all deprived from the people of Uganda by dictator Museveni, not, knowing, not unknowingly, but he does this exactly to benefit his own egoistic needs, which are detrimental to the future of the Republic of Uganda we all envision. You understand, brothers and sisters, we need to restore these 
human rights, brothers and sisters, they cannot be restored if we choose silence. I'm appealing on to us, fellow Ugandans, I'm submitting before us that we have to do more. We have to do more to over, I mean, to overpower Museveni's propagandists who are swanning in on the international community via their networks. Brothers and sisters, let us overwhelm them by bombarding them with the truth. Brothers and sisters, remember fellow combatants, digital warriors, we are equipped with weapons that will never run out of ammunition. That is the truth. Brothers and sisters, remember philosophy reminds us that in order a false statement to stand for a minute, it has to be backed up by almost a thousand words, of which they don't have a thousand words to back up a ten sentence, a, a ten sentence a statement they issue on a daily basis so the more we confront their frostified statements the more they become exhausted and eventually they will let it go and join and join the struggle and will push the dictatorial of Mr. Museveni's regime out of our political institutions. Brothers and sisters, do not, do not underestimate the efforts you input in our struggle to do our work with dictator Museveni. Philosophy. An ancient philosopher once said that who, he who has not even a knowledge of common, of common things is a brute among men. He, he who has accurate knowledge of human concerns alone is a man among brute. But he who knows all that can be known by intellectual energy is a god among men. Man's status in the natural world is therefore dependent on the quality of his thinking. He whose mind is enslaved by his bestial instincts is philosophically not superior to the brute. He whose rational faculty ponder human affairs is a man. He whose intellect is being elevated to the consideration of human of divine reality is a god among men. For his being protects the ruminari the ruminosity with which his mind has brought him into proximity. So brothers and sisters, what are the ancient philosophers say that he who has not even a knowledge of common things is a brute among men. Where is the brutality within your being unnoticed by you? Brothers and sisters, common things are the things such as are the things such as the rights, the human rights, those are the common things the ancient philosopher was referring to, that he who does not have even a knowledge of those common things is a brute among men. Meaning that if you take or if you turn a blind eye on the pressing issues, the issues that retards the aspiration of us, of all of us, of all, of all us Ugandans, you are a brute among us. So brothers and sisters, the brutality comes when a person chooses silence amidst the, opp the oppression. You understand? So if Museven takes away the rights of personal integrity and you decide to keep quiet, you become a brute. Because your silence contributes to Museveni's subjugation or legitimizes Museveni's brutality against us, including you who have chosen silence. That is why the philosopher said, he who has not a knowledge of common things is a brute among men. So brothers and sisters, our personal integrity must be restor restored as long as we engage into the activities which are intended to curb or to mitigate the things that bring this brutality in our midst. Museven deprived us from all civil liberties, whereby a person can 
because he or she is affiliated to the current regime and they chase you off your land. They are taking uh, all civil liberties away from you. The social and the economic rights, Museven took them away from us, fellow Ugandans. We can all attest to that, that in Uganda, no entrepreneur has got access to the then banks which were funding people with knowledge. You understand? There is no such a thing anymore. Museveni have taken all the institutions. We all see how the government money is disappearing. We all see that all the security companies which are supposed to transport money or cash in transit, they are disappearing. Not because of the thugs within Kampala. No, this is a well-orchestrated state-funded missions. We all remember According to the stories we were told by our parents and elders who were there while I'm seven fighting, though I was there, but I was not in the position to understand the unfoldment of things and the brutality and the nastiness within Museveni's mentality or being. Museveni robbed all the banks during his gorilla way. Museveni robbed all the banks. Museveni stormed all prominent, you know, tycoons in Uganda. They robbed them. They robbed the banks. Now that their regime is ending and it is irreversible, they have resorted on those outdated jungle methods. You understand? They are stealing Uganda's taxpayers' money. They are stealing Uganda taxpayers' money, saying that hackers somehow gained access into... Uh, uh, um, into Uganda, Uganda, into Uganda Bank, and they stole 15 million US dollars. You understand? For for us, the general public, that one, it is inconceivable that the hackers can penetrate the Bank of Uganda and steal that amount of money. We know for the fact that that money is being stolen by Mr. Museven and his entire family. 15 million US dollars, foreign donations coming to support people with HIV, coming to support people with a, a lot of infirmities and people who are suffering, for, who are being maimed by the very same regime which is stealing the international fundings. We are telling you, fellow Ugandans, do not choose silence because we still have a lot of work to do. Brothers and sisters, let us continue mobilizing each other. Philosophy, philosophy, convincing evidence of the increased superficiality within the minds of Uganda's spiritual leaders and some cultural leaders. It is its persistent drift towards money the interests. Fellow Ugandans, why am I saying this? That convincing evidence of the increased superficiality within the minds of spiritual leaders and some cultural leaders in Uganda, it is its persistent drift towards money the interest. Brothers and sisters on the African continent, in Uganda, in the western side, there is a diocese known as Kigezi. Kigezi diocese, it is the diocese that borders with Rwanda. There is a, a bishop, the archbishop, of that very diocese by the names of Athanasius, Anasius Asimwe, a man who received a package of money from Museveni's agent who serves as the Minister of Defense in the current Rotten Museven NRA regime. This man gave a man of God a parcel of bribery in the broad daylight. And now this archbishop came out and said that the Museven brutal regime has played a very, very vital role in professionalizing the army. That the Museven regime has connected a link between the natives and the military people. 
So when we talk of the military, there is a professional, professionalized military by the sense of the word, but not in Uganda. In Uganda, Museven, he is using militants who have no political education whatsoever. They were indoctrinated by misusing a word, patriotism. You understand? So, in the words of Africa's great revolutionist by the name of Thomas Sankala, pointed out that patriotism without political education turns a soldier into a potential criminal. Now, according to what we see, Museveni's militants are criminals, okay, because of their lacking of political education. You understand? Now, the man of God, the man of God, he is saying that Museveni's militants have been professionalized and that there is a link. There is a link between the civilians and the militants, of which we reject vehemently that this so-called man of God, Archbishop Kigese Diocese Catholic Church, he is conniving with Museven to paint a rosa picture that there is somehow some sense of, you know, some sense of dignity. When it comes to Museveni's militants, there is no sense of dignity whatsoever because this statement was uttered a couple of days ago. And in this very month, yet the National Unity Platform was grieving and commemorating the lives of those, the lives of the people who were killed by dictator Museveni. By dictator Yoruba Museveni's militants, on his orders, now the man of God comes and tells us that Museveni has pro professionalized the army. If the army was well professionalized, they wouldn't obey the order to kill innocent Ugandans, of which in actual, in actual sense they are their cardinal pillar to protect, because the military it is meant to protect the people of Uganda within its boundaries. All the people who lives in Uganda, the cardinal pillar of the military, it is to protect those individuals, right? But it is the same military, not the police. It is the SFC that unleashed brutality on the 18th and 19th of November year 2020. Now, how comes that a man of God come and hire Museven and give credit to Museveni's brutal regime? Because he has been given money to speak so. A person who took that parcel of bribery to this very Kerrigs man, he is a man who is responsible for embezzling the global fund money which was meant to, to help people who are stricken by HIV. You understand? This is the same man who serves as Ms. Museveni's Minister of Defense, took the money and treated the minds of a spiritual leader. A man who is not lacking any spiritual understanding. A man who was educated through all Catholic stages. A man who recited catechism. A man who went in all convents to study how to administer society, societal values. This is the man who says that there is somehow a link between the militants controlled by Museven known as SFC and the people of the Republic of Uganda. Brothers and sisters, isn't that a convincing evidence of the increase, the superficiality within the minds of spiritual leader? What is superficiality? It is to look upon something just with, on the, its outer appearance without going in depth into that thing. You understand? So there is no spiritual leader could possess such a shallow mind. You understand? A mind that looks on things on its outer appearance because 
any spiritual leader, any theory, I mean theologian, understands very well to interpret things that if I go before the general public, how are they going to perceive the message of which I'm about to send to them? Given the fact that the overwhelming evidence of Museveni's brutality by means of his military it is undeniable. Now, what led to these men of God to issue such a statement? Similarly, in the Karicho Ryan, there is a man who imposes to be the Prime Minister of Buganda, Charles Peter Maiga. Charles Peter Maiga issued a similar statement praising Mr. Museveni's brutal regime that there is no other administration in those that came prior to Museveni's brutal regime can be compared in terms of goodness that Museveni has done ever since he captured the power. We asked a question that gave us only, only one example that Museveni have done this and it benefits the people of Uganda. Only one example that Museveni has built a school in Uganda and it will impart education, impart knowledge in the people of Uganda for four decades. There is no such a thing. What we saw was Museveni to go and build a school in Kyoto, Tanzania. What we know is that Museveni was given a land in, in Kenya Kakamega to build a university to be named before him. What we see, it is the dilapidating of all infrastructure that are supposed to be of the minister of Ministry of Education. What we see, it is the increase of private schools as opposed to government schools, of which Museven was educated in government schools. But he decided to demolish all of them, to kill their standard by appointing his unqualified wife to be the Minister of Education. Brothers and sisters, this is a concerted effort. This is a concerted effort within Mr. Museveni's family to enslave the people of Uganda. He has successfully managed to impoverish them. He has successfully managed to impoverish the people of the Republic of Uganda, because he imposed taxes, taxes upon their businesses with an intention of driving them out of the competitive arena of economy. Brothers and sisters, we can see the rise of the so-called foreign investments. We all know that these Indians and the Chinese are being manipulated and they stand in the position of being investors while using Uganda's taxpayers' money. Stolen by dictator Museven. Fellow Ugandans, you all remember that Museven took 70% while exchanging money after he had captured the power. That was thievery. That was theft. That was done in a thug, in a way of a robber. Brothers and sisters, we need economists to come and tell us what was the purpose of the government taking 70% while exchanging the money. We need answers. We would have got answers from the parliament, but the parliamentarians are all compromised. Museveni is busy compromising the integrity of the representatives of the people of Uganda into the parliament of Uganda. He is tilting their minds. He has accustomed them to bribery. Brothers and sisters, now corruption it is the order of the day in the place where laws and regulations that are meant to oversee the well-being of Ugandans are being manufactured. That is the place that that is a place right now that breeds corruption within the circulation. Brothers and sisters, isn't this a convincing evidence that spiritual leaders are in connivance with the Museven? Why would a man in a cap and gown come and say that Museveni's regime 
It is a right regime. Are you trying to stain our faith as Catholic? Archbishop of Chigiz Diocese, Uganda. Are you trying to stain our faith that he is in connivance with the Museven to subjugate us, the congregants of the Catholic Church in Uganda? Are you trying to stain the image of our faith, the faith that raised us? Archbishop Kiges Diocese, Anasias Asime, we are speaking to you, Elder. We are speaking to you, Elder. We are saying that we are to regain our freedom. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, isn't this a convincing evidence? After we realize that it is convincingly, why don't we act? And we boycott from going in all these churches. And we say we shall resume our faith activities when we are away with the Museven. Because men of God who stands at the altar and pretend to be speaking the word of God, the word of God, they are representing the word of Satan. They are representing the words of Satan. They are representing the understanding of Belsbo. Once you advocate for Musevenese ideology, you are advocating for a devil. Because all the tendencies, all the tendencies, the tendencies owned by Belsbo can be traced in dictatorial Museven. And we are the testament who have tested the wrath of a devil. That is Museven. A country whose subsistence is reliant on spilling innocent blood, and a man of God come and praise that same regime? Brothers and sisters, convincing evidence, it indicates that we are to confront perverted men of God in cap and gown, purporting to be disseminating the words of the Most High and the values of the Catholic Church. The words that you speak, does not represent the value of the Catholic Church. That is our faith. We cannot sit back and look on while our faith is being stained. Oh, Archbishop, she gets diocese, Anasias Asimwe, we are saying that the Catholic Church is older than your old age. We are saying that the Catholic Church raised us in a manner that we are speaking against injustices as opposed to wield the guns and slaughter each other. We are saying the Catholic faith leads us and it gives us the courage to speak against the bad things being done by Dictator Rome 7. How comes that you, Anasias, Archbishop, Anasias, Archbishop Kiges Diocese, Catholic Church, why are you staining our faith? Brothers and sisters, it is the same people, some Kriegsmen, and some men imposed by Museven in our cultural institutions are the ones who are confusing the international community and most importantly, they are targeting the audience of African young men and women. Because they know that they are using perverted religious leaders and their theology, the, theologians to confuse the minds of young Africans. Is that our subjugation or separation it is attributed to the faith we have respectively, of which we refuse to buy. We are saying that faith has kept us Harmonious less safe. But dictator. Mm. Ah, 
na wako ze sebi kolobero kubanga basubira yo kapeche kwa basubira yo kamoto kwa basubira yo anything basubira yo any place so kuva edi genom seven ni wako lebi kolobero ni vila vila ne bible jiba tu kusomesa ni vila vila ne katonda ntino ya singa amani wabila ni matala mseven nga kati ya singa amani norecho mbi kolobero vyo nabi yako ze ni babi ya ila vila ntia sabantu watulugo nye zabantu ajudo msa igu wabantu mungalu abana bandi abuza otomanyi kitu wa kumaiti ni wasikilanga wacha mwero kaminga mma chachi dawe atina omanya ntino ne church na yo yale malada kati ya jojo ne misango jino mseven ni jako ze Je misango chagulanyi senta mwuri batubuwa njotora mkoti ya nsiona ICC. E misango jaru kwa ngagaru nene. Jeno msefe ni alimu kutintima every day every night. Chechi dako chechi ja. Ne obujuri zivuwe yongera kugenda yo. Buli chakola akola mistake. Akola wikolo veru. Ngabobo obujuri zivuwe yongera kupairi inga. Orunaku kugenda kutuka jeno msefe ni afese. Ngabamu mtute hegi. Ngempali bajuwa nisi wagula kakondo ne mutabaniwe. Batu wala tibali nya, hmm? tibali nya, tibali nya Luwa bikolo mba ziba kola Bonga balo oza, bese vingo kusiga la muntebe Na ya tengali mkwesi mirabu nya Unakuru genda kucho, unakuru genda dula wako Sababu sabi vula mu, unakuru genda kulabi wako Nga jino msefe ni alima vega, alimu kaguli Nga damu ya bibuzo, nga waka untabilite Kubantu base, batu lugu njiza Bababala watamanjikidua kuma itire Ebikolo vila vya koze vana Uganda Kutubu dembili obu ntu kwa koze just wait for that time ona kurugenda kucha all room fetatu gena kulula bako neja kulaba ku maziga ga jeno mseveni nga akaba nga yejuse abikolobero bya zakola natenga te bichadda mabega kuba ya bikola atenga bya wandikibadda atenga no musango je guli gwakirizwa eranga very soon ogenda kulira ic singe kaona mugo ga mantino jeno yo we rikaguta mseveni ndio sani yo we rikumuhoz kainerugaba kakapa mikono mabega muswatu bomsibwe